This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. So we got an Ancient Brass Dragon. If you weren't here or didn't see the video from the Early Access event where I reanimated this thing like three times, when it wasn't even in my graveyard, I cast the five mana reanimation spell and reanimated it like twice without it being in my graveyard before I cast it. And it was amazing. And obviously it's what we take. It's super busted. Um, you know, if it hits your opponent, you win. Uh, hard to lose. Um, yeah, and we're not missing a whole lot. This card's really weird. Seems so out of place because it's like, hey, you want to have artifacts and like literally no archetype in the format wants them. But it is powerful. Um, beyond that, I mean, Dread Lenorm and Meteor Golem are both interesting, but I think Ancient Brass Dragon is the easy pick here. Maybe it'll do as good for us today as it did during the early access event. <laughs> the luck was real. It was very real. That's partly why I unlocked all the black uh, art things first, too, because I wanted to get to the Brass Dragon, who is my friend. Um, so Drider's not great. Um, this is this pack is not very good, like for anybody. Like, I, the, hopefully the first pick was something really good because what's left, you know, there's there's lots of playables, but nothing you really are super thrilled to be taking with the second pick. I guess Sepulchre Ghoul isn't too bad to take with a second pick, but that's that's about it. Um, <laughs> you know, I like Valor Singer and Red Decks and, you know, decent two-drop, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we'll take Sepulchre Ghoul here. Another Drider. Why did anybody want a Drider? I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. All right, we'll take an Owlbear here. So Black Green is the graveyard deck, so it's going to be the best home for the Brass Dragon. Also works reasonably well with Sepulchre Ghoul. Uh, and it, this is just a good card, too, so... Thank you uh, for the sub, Tanic Tungus. Um, yeah, if there's enough, you know, I, it's playable. You have to end up in a very specific deck for the Kenku, what you call it. Um, but it is doable. I mean, uh, it's not impossible, but it's definitely not something you take with, like a first pick. That's for sure. <laughs> because your deck needs to have some good number of artifacts and especially treasure to take advantage, so. Okay. Well, Owlbear Shepherd has been pretty impressive. It's been easier than I expected to draw cards with it. I do like Ghoul and Imp reasonable amount, but the Owlbear Shepherd is a pretty real engine. And plus, picking up an Owlbear and then an Owlbear Shepherd back to back gives you some bonus points, right? So, Scaled Nurturer is kind of worth a look. You know, ramp is a thing in this format, and obviously getting our dragon down as soon as possible is, is what we want to do. This pack has some nice stuff, too. Um, so, Shambling Gas, Pilgrim's Eye, Underdark Basilisk. These are all things I like um, a reasonable amount. If we're in green, we're not going to be hurting that much for fixing, most likely. So I don't think I'm that desperate for a Pilgrim's Eye. I kind of like the Ghast more. Like, more than likely, we're going to be a grindier deck, and we need to have early plays that can stop the aggro decks, and the Ghast is a great one-drop for that. So is the Basilisk. Um, you know, both of them are a little worse because of double team, but, uh, you know, they're still pretty good. So here's Summon Undead. Definitely has a high ceiling, and we had crazy luck with it during the early access event. Um, we're in black, green... This pack, not great otherwise. This is a card that I misread in my set review that I give like an A to, but it's not that good. And it's not bad. Like, I think you'd play it in basically every blue-red deck, but obviously that's not us. So we'll take Summon Undead, see if we can find any other sweet synergies for that. Um, okay. Weaponry, pretty nice. I mean, there's no guarantee. We could end up in black-red, um, you know. We do have two pretty good green cards, but Circle of Moon Druid is a pretty much is a pretty big step beneath them. So, although it does decently with uh, Owlbear Shepherd, I guess that's a little combo. Um, 
But yeah, I like the weaponry enough. I think we take it instead and see what happens the rest of the way. Another weaponry, a couple of mediocre green cards, and a giant fire beetles. I think I like the fire beetles enough more than these two that I probably take it. We could definitely splash the Shepherd. I think we probably would. Like, if we end up in a black-red deck, Shepherd is definitely worth a splash. So. So, there's Kinku Artificer. Uh, we do have one way to make treasure. Two ways to make treasure. <laughs> but it's also blue, so... I don't really want to take it. You line up the shot and follow the tracks are both fine. Um, I guess I'm going to take follow. I like the ramp. We have a brass dragon, so makes sense, right? Um, okay, so we'll take an ambitious dragonborn here. It does seem more like we're going back into green, especially getting this late of a null hunter. We're definitely, we're definitely going back into green. See you later. Iron golem. I mean, it's more likely to make the deck than unexpected allies, I guess. Even if we end up in red, I don't really plan on I don't really plan on playing either of them, to be honest, but you know. If we have more owlbear shepherds, Iron Golem gets interesting. What green cards do you think the power level for is different, uh Cornholio? <laughs> like you're talking about like Knoll Hunter? So far, I think it... I mean, it was really good in Forgotten Realms, and I think it's pretty good here. So, if we end up with enough graveyard stuff, I think this is kind of playable, so we'll grab it. I don't... We probably won't, but, you know. Okay, Thought Devourer is quite good. Um, you know, let's go after our opponent's hand, and then we get, to, we get a card out of their hand. Um... Even if you get a land, it feels pretty good. Um, Ambergris is quite good, of course. Uh, I wouldn't hate Band Together or Herd Gorger, but I think we take Devourer here. Oh, yeah. Circle of... I mean, I wouldn't say Circle of Moon Druid was a good card in Forgotten Realms Draft, but it was better. I can agree with you on that. Um, it wasn't good, though. <laughs> like, it was like... But it was like a C, and in this format, it feels more like a D+. Plus. So, yeah, that is a difference. It does get better. Like, there are decks where it definitely plays like a C still. If you have a bunch of, like, Owlbear, Shepherd, and Null Hunter type cards that care about high power, like, you know, turn two Null Hunter, turn three Circle of Moon Druid is pretty spicy, but, um, yeah. Saw Kaleem earlier. We have another one here. All right. So we've got Dragon's Fire, which is strong to splash, but there's also Owlbear Shepherd and Skilled Nurturer. I think the Shepherd is good enough to take it, but obviously the Nurturer is appealing in this deck. You know, we have a Dragon to ramp into already, but I think Shepherd's good enough. I take it here, and now we are kind of getting into a neighborhood where Circle of Moon Druid that we were just talking about gets a little bit better. Oh yeah, I have an Owlbear just chilling over here. And we might even play Iron Golem, depending on what happens here. Especially, you know, if we get um, Baba Lee Saga, which is a rare, so it's unlikely, but I could see it making the deck. Okay. Well, another pretty strong pack for us, although not so much with the rare. Uh, but Skullport Merchant, Sepulcher Ghoul, and Grim Bounty are all quite good. I think the Merchant's good enough. You know, it's just really powerful, the amount of value it generates. It does have low power, which, you know... With our Owlbear Shepherds isn't ideal, but I think I can live with it. I think it's good enough. Gives us some more fixing, too. Right now, we're not much of a Summon Undead deck. Red looks pretty reasonably open. This pack kind of looks like it just didn't have much of anything, though. I'm kind of leaning towards taking Summon Undead. Like, not only 
does it work out for us okay if we end up with some other big things to reanimate? Um, it also synergizes with some other stuff in black green. So, and I think I like it a little better than another follow the tracks right now. We're not splashing anything. So both are cards that may not make the deck basically like, yeah. But yeah, like throwing another like Knoll Hunter and I think I'm all over like Owlbear or uh, Circle of Moon Druid. Wow, there are two Eldritch packs. So, I think we take Black Dragon. It gives us another good reanimation target for Summon Undead. Um, and it's a pretty good card in general. I do like Cast Down a lot. And I think if I didn't have two Summon Undeads, it'd probably be the pick here. But I think Black Dragon's powerful enough. And our deck is interested enough in reanimating it that I, that I go for it. Okay. It's so probably Underdark Basilisk. Nice two drop. We don't have a lot of twos right now, so. Two big dragons. Um, that's cool. Yeah, it is true. Cast down doesn't kill a lot of stuff. It's still really good, though. I mean, it kills like 90% of things. We did get Mythic Eon Volterra. We did. Another Basilisk. We would like... So this is one of these graveyard cards, but it's just so unimpressive. Like if I had other, more than just like summon undeads, I'd be interested, but I think we just take another Sepulchre Ghoul. We need more meaningful two drops. Thank you for the resub, Ian Volterra. Another Basilisk. Gray Slot's getting interesting a little bit, um, but it's probably just another Basilisk like. You know, I was excited about the black green graveyard deck and all the cool stuff it had. And I was like, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that nobody else is going to want. And that's true, but it's almost too true. <laughs> because you need to get like a critical mass of these cards or none of them are playable. Um, and that is kind of a problem. <laughs> all right, we will take this now. <laughs> we could get two Eldritch packs, I guess. But I think it's way too inconsistent about what it does. So... So, if we throw in, like, a Lenorm, I probably do play, like, one Summon Undead, but where we are now, I'm not so sure. Ooh. Well, we've got a Black Market Connections, which is strong, but <laughs> also a little dangerous. We've also got an Innkeeper, which is really strong. Ramps us, which we're interested in. Um, gains us some life. Yeah, I haven't played with or against this yet. It's just such a weird card. I'm just worried about... Like, the amount of life you pay is very significant. So, I like it, but I think the Innkeeper is going to do more work for us. Okay, so we got two big boys here. I think the Lenorm is actually a little better than Hurt Gorger. Um... Do like Deadly Dispute, but yeah, I think, you know, this having an adventure just makes it better than Herd Gorger for the most part. All right, Banded Gather or Sewer Plague. Looks like Banded Band Together is going to be pretty good. We have three Basilisks, so. Okay. So another Herd Gorger. As much as I like it, I kind of think Guild Sworn Prowler is a better pick here. Although we do have a mountain of two drops. Um, but a couple of them I kind of hope we cut. And the Prowler is better. Uh, the Herd Gorger does give us another big thing. Um, which definitely matters. So maybe this is more replaceable. Yeah, let's take a Herd Gorger. Okay, so we like do have the means. Oh, we actually have a Kaga here. I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I was gonna say we do have the means to splash, but 
We're not great at it, so humiliation as good as it is, I don't think we take. I think we take Kaga over Vampire Spawn. There's our signpost uncommon. So, like, I don't really want to run Poison the Blade, although with we don't have a ton of removal, so maybe we do. Don't really want that either. Um, so more fixing and ramp. We definitely don't have a ton of ramp. I mean, it's treasure that we're mostly leaning on here. Um, the lantern's kind of interesting. It actually does something in the late game, too. And it's not like we don't have four seven drops, so I think we take it. Ooh. Okay, so Jahira's a nice pickup this late. It's great two drop. Like all the specialized cards, it's pretty powerful. Another poison the blade. We may kind of need an eye of the beholder more than we need a bard, just cause removal. So another herd gorger. We'd probably take a horde robber though. Another eyes of the beholder. I mean, it's going to be a stretch to even play one, so I don't think we pick that up. White was pretty open, I guess. I think our deck turned out pretty good, though. I mean, oh. Ambitious Dragonborn is actually playable in this deck. I think we actually do run uh, Summon Undead here. We have enough big creatures that the chances of us, you know, already having one in our graveyard to reanimate or uh, milling one is high enough. That I think we probably do it. Yeah, specialize is nice with that. Unfortunately, we only have one specializer, but yeah, it is pretty good. I don't think we run the prism in the end. When you're not fixing at all, it gets a lot less interesting. Um, when you don't need fixing, I should say. Um, yeah, so in the end, we ended up with like two or three removal spells. Probably fewer than we want. Follow the tracks gets a little less interesting, but because it ramps us, you know, we're not fixing, but I think we can leave it in. Um, do we need Eyes of the Beholder? Probably cut Iron Golem in the end. That's pretty easy. And the Shepherd doesn't do anything in our deck really either. Horde Robber is not nearly as good in this format as it was in the other one. It is good with Poison the Blade, but... Yeah, we have a lot of fixing, not just the ghast. Uh, but we don't really need it, is the thing. We need ramp. We don't need fixing. Yeah, so I probably cut both of those. I do think, you know, we do have some lower power creatures, but we have enough high power creatures that the shepherd's going to be good. I mean, it's not going to be perfect in this deck. We're not great at utilizing it, but we're okay at it. So Dragonborns do have the potential to be big, but not not that much potential, frankly. They're going to be 4-4s four more often than not, so probably don't really want them. Do I just axe Eyes of the Beholder? Could be. Yeah. So Lantern of Revealing definitely isn't great. Maybe we have enough ramp without it, though, because we have... Yeah. I think we have enough ramp without it. I think I like Summon Undead enough in this deck that I want to run two. Okay. Deck looks pretty good to me overall. Um... All right. Um, yeah. More band togethers would have been nice. We have a bunch of death touch, but what are you going to do? In the end, the deck could really could have used a couple of those. Like, Myconids would have been great, of course, but the two mana zero two would have been pretty good in this deck. The one that taps for green and gives you back two life when you play dragon with it.
we're mostly leaning on treasure as our ramp, which is fine. Um, well, <laughs> I think we can keep this. Hmm. The reason I think it's okay is because I can pitch this, but... But man... I think we probably have to mulligan. If we don't draw black, I don't know how we make it. <laughs> Sounds even worse. Okay. I kind of have to mulligan this one, too. Not where you want to be starting. Okay, I can live with this. Um, back. A land. And follow the tracks, maybe? I mean... Yeah, I can either put back another land or follow the tracks, and I think just putting follow the tracks back is better. Our win chances to win this game just plummeted. Those are some bad hands, <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. Okay. Do I really plan on blocking? No, but I also don't really want to trade my Basilisk for that. Don't play an Ambergris. We were doing that to people with our last deck. Turn two, Captain. Turn three, Ambergris. It's rough. Although, I can just kill the Ambergris. So it's not the end of the world. Okay. So, we do have Dreadlenorm mana now, which kind of matters. But they can give... Yeah, so I think we just play Sepulchre Ghoul here. They might just give their creature flying, but if that's how they spend their turn, I think I'm pretty happy about that. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. So they're going to make a goblin token here and everything? Like, all that nonsense is about to happen? Oh, okay, or maybe not. They didn't... They want to wait till they can make it fly, I guess? Makes sense. But it's not good for us. You know, we had a horrible mold of five to start with. And then our opponent plays Hobgoblin Captain and Battlecry Goblin. Which are a disgusting combo together. Give Battlecry Goblin fly. Ooh, our preview card. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna crush us before we can ever do anything about it. So it would appear. So they can buff this to a four-one with first strike. So I don't really think we want to block it. I do think we'll block Battlecry Goblin, and then we just take nine. I guess I should have blocked the token too. To block that token. So, yeah, we're dead pretty much. A quick death. I was going to say, I think if I were them, I would just swing out here. I mean, it's it's a tough situation for me. Oh, yeah, you can just give them both flying and kill us anyway, of course. That's not how you want your first game to go, but, you know. When you mold a five and you're on the play, I don't know how much your win percentage drops. <laughs> but I think it's quite a bit. <laughs> so, you know. But both of those hands, the, the first one... You know, 
I think probability said I should mulligan both times, but obviously the first one was like the best by a wide margin. So didn't really get to play magic in that game. And that happens sometimes in our favor. Had to wait a while for the last two games. For whatever reason. Right, this one is much better um you know getting three of our big drops is a bit of a bummer but maybe we'll be able to discard one and we do have a bit of ramp we have to find more and obviously this one also has another mode that's cheaper all right more mana helps um i kind of don't think playing the innkeeper first does me a whole lot of good in this situation so i think we'll play the ghoul first because um, yeah, it gets in for more damage, and it looks like it's going to. Keep the mana coming. We're gonna need it. <laughs> Skullport Merchant. Alright, that is, in fact, more mana. Um, okay. Sure, they just take this. Ooh. They have one mana. So I could sack, but I think just using Dreadlenorm is going to be better. If they're splashing white for, like, Patriarch's Humiliation or something, that's kind of annoying. But I think we go for it. Like, what is their treasure capable of producing? Nothing. Good. <laughs> that's what I like to see. I like to see nothing. <clears throat> All right. So our ghoul is not long for this world. Um, we need one more land and then we're in business for at least the first of these creatures. like I may play black dragon first okay we have to wait another turn but that works um yeah we just pass the reason I want to play black dragon first is because I can kill a thing and then if they have removal you know I just have other stuff they do know we have dread Lenorm for what that's worth they're leaving up a bunch of mana. I don't like that. <laughs> we have summon undead, but most of our big things are in our hand, so. So the Lenorm is what they expect. To some extent, that makes it an interesting play here. Um, 
The problem is we're still two full lands away from playing either of these. <laughs> um, but we'll draw them, right? And we can use the merchant to throw creatures away for value if we have to. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to go to combat first, actually. All right, see if they did anything. But you know, we'll try to play Dread Lenorm here. Good chance he gets countered. But I can live with that. They did have to give up their own treasure, so there's that, but... <laughs> Oh yeah, also Summon Undead means I just get it back anyway, so <laughs> I kind of didn't think about that side of things. Uh, so maybe playing the Black Dragon was just better, because if we don't draw a land, that's what we're going to do. I mean, we actually need two lands, so if we don't draw something else to play, that's what we're going to do. Okay, we did draw something else to play, but I think we probably still just reanimate Dread Lenorm here. Yeah. Yeah. make them have the removal for it. Okay, that's less than ideal. I think it's safe to say. <laughs> We're gonna turn those all into two twos with no abilities. So in response to them playing that uh, Harvester, I probably use the Merchant to throw away something. Because if I can hit a seventh land, I mean, we're kind of in business. Um, So we'll use the merchant's ability, throw away. Doesn't matter really, they're all gonna be two twos. <laughs> so all right, we got our seventh land. It's just a question of which of these giant dragons I want to play. They still have so many cards in their hand that I'm pretty concerned they have removal. So I think playing Black Dragon is probably the safer play. Um, yeah, so we'll play Black Dragon. Kill their Vampire Spawn. Draw out some more removal while we're at it. The good news is if they do have the removal, you know, we do have another summon undead somewhere in our deck, so. Well, there's another summon undead. <laughs> All right, so we will attack them with black dragon. Then we'll play Ancient Brass Dragon. So if they have removal, we can bring it back. So that's good. <laughs> okay. So that's wild. <laughs> this is pretty good if you're trying to reanimate stuff, incidentally. All right, so we definitely attack with both of our dragons. Ooh. 
know that I expected that one. But now I can reanimate Black Dragon and kill theirs, right? I only got a six. Come on. <laughs> Just kidding. That's still pretty good because we get a Skullport Merchant and a Vampire Spawn. And then we cast Summon Undead, bring back Black Dragon to kill their Ancient Brass Dragon. Should I have just attacked with, like, everything this turn? <clears throat> and not really a reason to add another body to the board. They're dead a bunch of different ways here. Oh! <laughs> there was a chance, but I think they're dead, so I don't think it matters. I just swing out here, so... It's actually a you may, huh? I guess I didn't need to mill myself. Now I kind of wish I'd played this Knoll Hunter just for the additional um, value. So I think we throw this treasure away. Draw some more action if we can. Well, we can get a look at their hand even. Actually, I don't get a look at their hand, the way it works. Uh, okay. So, attack with everything. I guess making them lose a card first is probably just better, just to be safe. <clears throat> Train Devil. Okay. Well. Just to be safe again, I think we play the Chain Devil to make them lose one of their creatures before we attack. <clears throat> And then we attack with everything. Aren't that many things that can save them here? There could be something, I guess. They wouldn't have stuck around this long if there wasn't. And if they gave us a Chain Devil, the other thing they have must be pretty good because they allowed us to thin out their board. Um, so... If they can, like, save their Brass Dragon and uh, kill ours, things could get a little sketchy here. Okay, I think you're still dead, though. Yep, just barely. If they hadn't given me that Chain Devil, they might have survived there. Of course, they still would have had to block our... Um, uh, dragon with their Dragon to not lose, so... It's always interesting me to me the art they decide to put as the background like when whatever sets the newest like this is good art and all but and like what are they flying on giant toucan flamingo hybrids i'm sure it's you know those of you who know about dungeons and dragons know exactly what they are but <laughs> they're interesting birds that's for sure egg palpator okay Ugh. Too many hands that have looked like this. We mulligan. At least we're on the draw. And yeah, okay, we're gonna keep. Ugh. Do we send the brass dragon back? As good as it is, probably. We're so far from casting it. Like if we hit another mana, we'll kind of get there. But the only problem there is with this plan is I don't think we have any way to shuffle our library so it'll be on the bottom the whole game but I think we kind of have to live with that
Too bad I didn't have Jahira. If I had Jahira, that hand would have been interesting. Oh, that helps. So yeah, let's play our Ghoul. So we are going to be able to ramp. We're probably going to get... What could have played a turn six dragon. It's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> After uh, how this started. Hmm. That is not good. Oh, I think we give them the forest and hope we draw another one. We don't, but we do draw another two drop we can play, and I think I can live with that. I think we attack here. This might be one of those drafts where we only have that one really sweet game. <laughs> that one we just played. <laughs> Yeah. It does make it so they can't play that card anymore. Yeah. And we get it back. So, works for me. I didn't think I was going to get it back, if I'm being honest. Until it leaves the battlefield. Okay. I should have. Alright. So, swing for two. Follow the tracks. Grab the black gate. Okay, we're kind of doing it. Um, I think I attack with the ghoul. If they want to trade the prowler, that's fine with us. It's not a two for one in that scenario. Uh, yeah, then we play owl bear. We just take five here. That's less than ideal. Oh, man. Our resources are just so thin that it's really... That ETB trigger is gross. So, I guess we play Underdark Basilisk and leave up Dreadlenorm. I actually don't have the mana because we had to give up a land. Good times. Um... Yeah, so that dragon's still at the bottom. Yeah, so we'll play our Basilisk and pass here. So, it might be time to block Guild Sworn Prowler. Like, we just can't afford to take a bunch more damage. I think we do it with that. Black Dragon would be nice to hit on reanimation. So, summon undead. At worst, we're going to get a Basilisk, which seems pretty good. I think it's kind of what we need to do here. Maybe we'll hit a black dragon. Let's do it. Nope. But, like I said, Basilisk number two isn't too bad. I do need a dragon, and I at least got deeper into my deck to where I can get one. And when I say dragon, I mean one that actually flies, not this one. <laughs> so. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we lose. Yep. Yeah, I just got run over too hard in that game. It's also a 7-2 and a 5-3, but... You know... All right, this is one of our best hands so far, I would say. A couple of early drops, a little bit of ramp if we want it, and our Brass Dragon. All 
one of those would have been nice. Oh, okay. So, um, I was going to play the Shepherd. I think now we play Jahira, though. So if we draw a reanimation spell, we have two copies of, um, we could discard this and reanimate it, which is pretty cool. I don't think we're going to. Yeah, so we'll play Owlbear Shepherd now. We're at four. Two, three, four, five, six. So we're still one mana, like if we lose our gas here, we're still one mana short of Ancient Brass Dragon. Baba Lysaga. She can be good if you have treasure and stuff. I've had a couple decks where she worked okay, actually. Um, another Owlbear Shepherd. <laughs> so... One, two, three, four, five, six. We kind of want our Shambling Gas to die now, because we could play our Brass Dragon next turn, and chances are good we'd get to draw two cards at the end of our turn. So even if they had removal, we get to draw two, and then... Yeah. I kind of doubt they're going to give us that opportunity, unfortunately, for us. This deck would have been better, like, if you throw in, like, four Mykonids into this deck, it would be an incredible deck, I think. Instead, it's a little unimpressive. Yes, attack me. I only get to draw one card now if, if I lose my ghast. So they do have a treasure now, so they'll be able to use that effect. Is the responsible thing to do here just to block and kill Bonecaller Cleric? Nah. Who needs responsible, right? I think we just make a treasure. Okay, so I could go a little less hard here and instead play the Hurt Gorger. But I think we play the dragon. I mean, there's not a lot in the graveyard, I guess. That is a factor. But just reanimating both of those is pretty good. But maybe playing the Herd Gorger first makes more sense. Probably does. Although they're in black. Yeah, let's just go for it. Let's play the brass dragon. We get to draw a card. It's a swamp. If they kill our dragon, please just use normal removal. <laughs> Don't do anything else. It does make it harder for them to... Um, do anything this turn. Hello, hello, Elena. Thank you for the follow. Like, using Lysaga this turn becomes a heck of a lot less attractive for them. Because they have to lose a creature, I might reanimate. So they have to, yeah, they have to kill my dragon. So... What to do here? Is it worth blocking the Circle of Moon Druid? Probably not. We're going to gain back some of this life, so... Now I just need to draw a reanimation spell, and we're in business. Um... So, Herd Gorger. No attacks. Draw a card. Okay. Attacking on draw, draw a card to Hill Giant, Herd Gorgers, and Brass Dragons is pretty sweet. I think they're going to take down the Herd Gorger now, too, though. Ah, uh, not really. Hopefully, they don't have a way to sack it. Oh, no, they do, because they have Baba Lysaga. Oh, if they attack with her, they can't do it. So, works for me. 
They could have the two mana sack this for treasure. And if they have that, we're pretty much dead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, blocking isn't really going to solve this problem for us. So I think we just hope they can't sack our herd gorger. They probably can, though, with uh, Deadly Dispute or whatever. Yeah. Ouchies. That's not that helpful. So, Innkeeper. Kaga. We really need our reanimation spell or we're in trouble here. And, I mean, I don't even know if that'll bail us out at this point. We had one sweet game with this deck, as I sort of predicted after that really sweet game, and the deck didn't feel that good. <laughs> but the sweet game was, you know, sweet, so I can live with it. Oh good, haste. Just what I was hoping to see. They don't have anything good to reanimate, at least. I'm kind of surprised they don't just want to lean on Baba Lysaga, but I guess they're worried I'll somehow... find a way to get there. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Harder... more guaranteed to kill me, you know. Um... So I guess Kaga blocks. The only thing about Kaga is Kaga could draw us what we need. It does basically give us two more draws. Okay, so we're going to block with this, and that leads to us taking how much? Yeah, I think Kaga's our best bet. Yeah, so we take, we take two... We take two. I don't need... It's very unlikely Kaga fixes this problem, but... It's better at it than some of our other cards. Okay, Owlbear's kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, we play the owl bear. What do we draw? Okay, we draw Thought Devourer. Is Kaga doing it? I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Definitely gave us a shot there, like we were hoping. Hitting an owl bear was probably the best case scenario. Uh, we are at three, so all they need is an artifact or an enchantment, and they win. So, you know, as sweet as that turn just was, I don't know that it's going to be enough. <laughs> all right, that is neither an artifact nor an enchantment. That's good news. We're going to have a Sepulchre Ghoul this next turn. They are going to draw a card here, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Darn Specialize. Yeah, so they're going to give minus one, minus one to one of these, which is enough to make them a lot less concerned about their situation. Um... They'll still draw a card at the end of their turn, too. So they're going to draw two. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. I have to block both. Now, yeah. <laughs> we just cross our fingers that Kaga works out again? I mean, that's, that's about all we can do. They get their ghoul back now. Okay, Kaga, what are you going to do? Well, Black Dragon is no joke. Um, though, it can't actually kill anything. So that's not so good. But yeah, Black Dragon. Well, it can, but it can only kill the 2-1. <laughs> you know, Kaga is, is really... Like, we would have lost this game like three turns ago if it weren't for Kaga. So... 
that was kind of fun. So it's sort of another sweet game. But we're still not dead, though. Because they need another removal spell. They can drop us to one here, but I block and kill Baba. Uh-oh. So now they have Artifact. Yeah, now we're dead. All right. They got us. Yeah, it was not, you know, we got to Mythic this weekend. But overall, it wasn't a great weekend for our overall win percentage, despite getting to Mythic. We were close to Mythic. Like, we were three wins away from Mythic to start the weekend, and we only just barely got it in our last draft, which tells you something. And since we got there, I think we've only dropped. So, <laughs> you know, getting to Mythic's good. Hopefully we can finish in the top 250 again. We're not there yet, but, you know. 